Hey guys, it's Numistaka. Welcome back to another video. And uh, I couldn't decide exactly what to do with this video, whether to show you some of the amazing coins that have arrived for grading submissions this week, or to continue the Mega Results series of videos with another episode of Results Unboxings. And having thought very, very carefully, um, I concluded that I was going to show you another box of coins that have arrived back from NGC with some results. And these coins, beautiful as they are, will have to wait for another couple of days and uh, until I can make a video showing them to you in detail. So let's move on with the Mega Results unboxing of graded coins that have come back from NGC. You may recall there were two of these large boxes that came back. We've uh, been through the first box and now we're ready for the second box and to see what's inside that, see how people have got on, see whether any good grades, any disasters, any successes, catastrophes and so on. It's always kind of interesting knowing what's what. Um, I, I don't know the order that the coins are coming out of in this box, but there's always a surprise or two. So let's start and see what comes out of the box. And the first coin out of the box is a pretty spectacular coin. It may not look very much, but it is a really, really interesting coin. 1989, they produced about 3,000 or so of these quarter-ounce Mexican Libertads, proof, platinum, and they were, they were produced in sets. And the sets, even though the mintage was quite high, nobody really knows what's happened to all the sets because the sets are absolutely invisible. There's very few of these that have ever been graded. I've been collecting Libertads for quite a few years, and this is the first one I've ever come across, first one that's been sent in for grading. There is actually a set that uh, contains this coin, a half ounce gold coin, and a proof silver coin. And it's just really, really difficult. It's called the rainbow set, I think. And it's very, very difficult to find and pretty expensive. And I'm unlikely ever to see another one of those once this one goes back to uh, its owner. Back to sovereigns, half a sovereign from 1892, got an AU55. Um, not stunning, but it could be a lot worse, could be a little bit better. So kind of middle of the road kind of result. This one, 1883, Australia, Melbourne. Always, um, it's a great series of years, even though this is a St. George and the 1883 shield back is much, much rarer. This has got loads of luster, really nice result, and the owner should be happy with that. Um, so for you Americans watching this, we've got an American coin for a change. Don't have that many of them going through, being from the other side of the pond. But this one is a Type 1 18, um, 1853 uh, gold dollar. Really nice not amazing condition, but these get really, really expensive when they go to uh, MS grades. And this one is, is a really nice genuine coin when so many of them have been hopelessly messed around with in jewellery. So many details coins, so many tampered with coins. Just getting a genuine result on a raw coin is something to celebrate. The, du the Ducat, Netherlands Ducat. It's a great, great coin. It's a coin that goes back hundreds of years, I think. I mean, I, I can't remember. I did know when they when they started the first ones, but I think it's probably, what, 200 years? Because um, it must be about 1817, because they celebrated the anniversary in 2017, this coin. And basically, the design has stayed exactly the same for 200 years, give or take the odd tiny change. So you can pick up really, really old versions of this coin and they'll look pretty much the same as more recent ones. A lot of people collect these. I think uh, it's probably the Holland equivalent of the Morgan dollar or something like that, or the, or the British so These ones are quite interesting. Um, dated 1892, Austria, um, but they're restrikes. And uh, if they were 1892, then they would have had to go in in the gold tier but I snuck them in, in the modern tier, which goes back to 1955, and uh, they weren't rejected for that, so saved a little bit of money on the grading of those coins. 
there were two of those that went in. They both did pretty well. I mean, MS64 is pretty good. Um, they're nice looking coins and very collectible. A lot of people really collect these coins. I've noticed these small European gold coins. There's a lot of interest in those. I don't know whether the interest is the same over in the States or Canada, but in Europe, there's a big, big interest in these kind of gold semi-bullion kind of coins from the last 150 odd years. Um, very collectible. And people like particularly the 20 franc, 20 lira, 20 fenix, 20 this. It's They're all kind of sovereign size gold coins, usually held in bank vaults in pretty good condition. So you can pick up really nice condition coins with lots of detail and not too expensive to buy. Therefore, a pretty big collector's following for these coins. And people try and collect maybe uh, a set of all the different ones of the same size from different countries in Europe. So, uh, um, and who can blame them? Who doesn't like gold? With great thanks to our sponsor, The Coin Connection, for agreeing to another month of 2% discounts. Uh, that's 2% off everything with the special code, Kevin. Yep, K-E-V-I-N. Kevin. Sometimes the coins that come back get interesting grades, like this one. Switzerland, uh, 20 Swiss francs, and it got a 63 plus. And I don't know why, but it just gives me a kick to get coins with a plus or a star. Um, it doesn't happen very often, but obviously so many coins come in from grading that it does happen to a few of them, but it's still a pretty rare thing. Uh, and very, very nice when it happens. Plus means that it didn't quite reach the next grade, but it's right at that upper quartile, I guess, or upper 20%, upper 15%. Almost touched it, but not quite. And they designate that with a plus sign. So, I don't know why I get a kick out of it. Call me mad, call me insane, call me anything, as long as you call me. But I love pedigree interesting pedigrees on coins and i've done this with one of mine as well so this one that was um, sold in the bentley auctions in 2012 but it also came from the duro shipwreck so it's got two pedigrees on it so this was once right at the bottom of the ocean it looks in pretty good condition now very well preserved in the ocean picked up from the rescue of the many, many gold coins that came out of the Duro shipwreck and then sold as part of the Bentley collection by Baldwins. So really nice, interesting pedigree on that coin. Another great, great success is this coin, 1905, so pretty late. And obviously the history of quarter eagles goes back way, way uh, back. Spans, I think, oh, about pretty much 70 years or something. So a lot of these kind of coins. But they only made them in pretty small quantities. They were all spent very easily. So they're all circulated and in pretty bad condition. Okay, it's a late one. But look at the luster on that. Uh, it is a really, really good example. And much, much harder than you would imagine to find coins to send to NGC that are American quarter eagles in this kind of grade. Um, it must be really, really hard. It's only ones that have been kept in families and, uh, you know, in the safe and treasured that uh, would be around still in that grade. Sovereigns. Quite often you see these 2016 sovereigns and I'm asked to put the monarch on the other side. This one uh, obviously didn't really matter. I remember this one when it came in. This is a South African Natura gems box. And I remember looking at this and trying to work out which way up the gems box was on one of the previous videos, but it did really, really well. It was conserved by NCS, and after conservation, it got a 70. And, you know, people say, well, why do you spend the money conserving with N NCS uh, on modern coins? Generally, it's most worthwhile doing on proof coins, because um, they tend to, they tend to be tiny imperfections and handling marks on proof coins and sometimes you can get those marks off with a little bit of fairy liquid and some warm water never never use anything abrasive or rough on one of these coins but 
Other times, it pays to spend an extra 10 or £11, pounds, $15 or whatever it is, give the coin to NCS. They will, you know, probably use professional fairy liquid and uh, professional hot water and drying with a with the right environment and that generally tends to have a beneficial effect on proof coins in terms of grade and it can often raise these coins up as long as they're not physically damaged it can raise them up by a grade and I've noticed quite a few people uh, entering coins uh, and having them conserved even though there's nothing really to conserve just one little speck on a proof coin can be the difference between a 69 and a 70 and where they are 69 or 70 the 69 one there may have been one speck and it didn't come off when they washed it or something like that i guess in many ways so we're reaching the end of this half box um i think that um there will be one more video coming up so watch out for the final installment of this kind of little mini mega unboxing um don't know what's in the next box it's usually quite a few sovereigns but uh, hopefully there'll be some other stuff to uh, give you some kind of nice interesting historical stories at the same time as we're doing the unboxing hope you like the video please like please subscribe please comment and uh, and let's all have fun seeing the successes and failures of everyone else in our community doing grading at NGC